Now it turns out that we're going to be solving parts a and b sort of in tandem because they both relate to the quantity vector a plus vector b plus vector c. Now whenever you're adding vectors, the first thing you probably want to do is to just make a picture of the vectors so you can kind of visualize what's going on. So we've drawn a picture over here on the right side of the screen. We have the three vectors marked a, b, and c with their respective angles of 30, 195, and 315 degrees, and they each have a magnitude of 50 meters. It's important to understand that in this question, the angles are measured relative to the positive direction of the x-axis. So in other words, all of the angles in this question are measured from the positive x-axis. That's important because as long as the angles are measured relative to that x-axis, that positive x-axis, then you can always use the cosine of the given angle for the x component and you can use the sine of the given angle for the y component. But again, that's only if the angles are measured relative to the positive x-axis, which in this problem, luckily they are. So what we'll do is take the vectors and organize them into a table. We have vectors a, b, and c, and then in a different color, we have the sum of those three vectors. Now, for vector a, all we need to do is take the magnitude, which is 50 meters, and then multiply it by the cosine of the given angle, which was 30 degrees. And then we do the same thing for the y component, except we change cosine into sine. Simple as that. Now for vector b, same idea. Take the magnitude, multiply it by the cosine of the given angle for vector b. And then for the y component, you take the magnitude and multiply it by the sine of the given angle for vector b. Same ball game for vector c. So take 50 meters, multiply it by the cosine of 315 degrees. And then take the 50 meters, and multiply it by the sine of 315 degrees. Now, what we're gonna do is, because this question wants the vectors a plus b plus c, we're simply going to add the x components together to get the x component of a plus b plus c, and then we're gonna add the y components together to get the y component of a plus b plus c. So what you'll do is you'll pick up your calculators and you'll make sure they are set to degree mode, and you'll do for the x components 50 cosine of 30 degrees plus 50 cosine of 195 degrees plus 50 cosine of 315 degrees. And when you do that, you should get an X component of about 30.36 meters. And then you'll do the same thing for the Y component, but just change all those cosines into sines. So when you add those three Y components, you should get about negative 23.30 meters. So now in order to take the x and the y components of the sum of the three vectors, what you should do is sketch a new triangle. So for example, we can see that the x component is positive 30.36 meters. So you can imagine taking a y and x axis, and then for the x component, you would extend a vector along the positive x axis. And so this is your 30.36 meters. And then your y component is negative 23.3 meters. So because it's negative, you're going to point it downward. And notice when you point it downward, don't do it from the origin. Do it from the head or the tip, if you will, of that vector you've already drawn. So in other words, your negative 23.30 meters should be right here. And then we see that the magnitude of A plus B plus C is this vector right here. And hopefully we know we can compute that by doing the Pythagorean theorem. So you would have a plus b plus c squared is equal to the 30.36 meters squared plus the negative 23.30 meters squared. Basically, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's pick up our calculators. Let's go ahead and compute the quantity on the right-hand side. When you do that, you're going to get about 1464.5. This would now be in meters squared. And then to get the magnitude, you're just going to square root both sides. And when you do that, you can see that the magnitude of A plus B plus C, and since it's magnitude, they sometimes put it in a little absolute value symbol here. That's going to be about 38.3 meters. So that is the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we needed this angle right here. 
Now, if we look carefully, we can see that the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side, which has a length or magnitude of 23.30 meters, divided by the adjacent, which is 30.36 meters. Notice for the 23.3, we're using positive, even though technically it is negative. The reason for that will become obvious in just a moment. We basically want to keep our angles positive for the time being. So we'll just include just positive values in this calculation. So the tangent of the angle would equal about 0.77, and then the angle would be the inverse tangent of 0.77. So on your calculator, you're gonna get about 37 and a half degrees. But let's be careful about how we report this angle. It's very possible that your homework system wants you to report the angle in relation to the positive x axis. So this angle here is 37.5 degrees, but what your homework system again might really want is this angle right here, because that is measured sort of counterclockwise from the positive x axis. Hopefully we can see that that blue angle would just be 360 minus the 37.5. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna take 360 and subtract 37 and a half degrees. And when we do that, we get 322 and a half degrees approximately. So that would be measured counterclockwise from the positive X axis, just to be clear on that angle. So that would be the correct answer to part B. Let's move on to parts C and D. This time we need, if we clean this up a little bit, we need to do, oh, okay, so it's A minus B plus C. So the good news here is we're gonna be able to use the same table. So let's copy and paste that down below. Now I said the same table, but of course we have to make one small adjustment because it's no longer the sum of all three vectors. We do have a minus b plus c. So just make sure that you have some minus signs right here to indicate that initial subtraction. But other than that adjustment, we should be good to go here. So pick up your calculators and go ahead and run through this column here. So you're doing the 50 cos 30 minus 50 cos 195 plus 50 cos 315. When you do that, you're gonna get about 127 meters and then for the Y components, switch everything into signs and you should get about 2.6 meters. Now to get the magnitude as before, we recommend that you redraw a picture on a Y X axis. So here's a Y X axis. You've got a positive 127 for the X component. And then you have a very small positive Y component of 2.6 meters. And then the resultant is this vector right here. That's your A minus B plus c, and to get the magnitude, we do the Pythagorean theorem. So it's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So we'll do the a minus b plus c squared is equal to 127 meters squared plus 2.6 meters squared. At this point, I'll assume that you know how to process this calculation. So we'll kind of expedite things here a little bit. And when you do that, you're gonna get about 127.0. So the magnitude of A minus B plus C is about 127 meters. So that's the answer for part C. For part D, we're gonna to need to get this angle right here. So we'll do tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And then you'll just do the inverse tangent of that ratio right there. And when you do that, you get a pretty small angle. It's only about 1.2 degrees. And you'll notice that that is already measured in the counterclockwise direction relative to that positive x axis. So this again is counterclockwise from the positive x axis. And that's gonna be the correct answer to part D of the question. And finally, we go to parts E and F, and it gets a little crazy here. They want A plus B minus C plus D is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and put a new table to solve this part of the question. Okay, so here is the table. Now this time we've included a fourth vector D whose X and Y coordinates are unknown to us. We have denoted them as D sub X and D sub Y. And the question tells us that this strange quantity A plus B minus C plus D should equal zero. So this just means that both the X and the Y components should equal zero. So let's examine the X direction first, perhaps. 
and we're going to be very careful here. So we're going to be combining A and B, but we're going to be adding them. So you would have 50 cosine of 30 plus 50 cosine of 195. Put that quantity in parentheses and then subtract the next quantity, which is sort of grouping these two vectors together. So you would have 50 cosine of 315 plus this unknown x component dx. So you could kind of do it like that and then just set this equal to zero. Now, why don't you pick up your calculator and do the first group. Do the 50 cosine of 30 plus the 50 cosine of 195. You're going to get about negative 5. And then this minus sign has to distribute through. So be careful there as well. So 50 cosine of 315 is 35.4. It's going to be minus 35.4 and then minus the dx or d sub x. And this is equal to zero. Now to solve for d sub x, why don't we just add it to both sides of this equation. And when we do that, the left side will just be this quantity here, so we can process that as well. Let's take that negative five and subtract that negative 35.4. We're gonna get about negative 40.4. So that's gonna be the x component of vector d. Now we'll do something similar for the y component, but we'll just change the cosines to sines. And so here is the setup for the y component of vector d. Again, the cosines have been changed into sines. This first group is 12.1 minus, now we have to distribute that minus sign. And be careful here because 50 sine of 315 is actually negative 35.4. And then you have the minus d sub y equals zero. Let's add the d sub y to the other side. And then the left-hand side becomes 47.4 meters. So up here you have the x component and down here we have the y component and just as before we're going to make a new drawing to help us visualize the problem. The x component is negative so it's going to go this way and it's 40.4 and then the y component is positive so it's going up this direction 47.4 meters. The resultant is this right here and we'll just call that R. It's gonna be Pythagorean theorem again, so we'll assume that you're okay at this point doing that Pythagorean theorem calculation. And when you process this, you're gonna get about 62.3 as the magnitude of vector D. This is the correct answer to part E. Now we just need the angle. So let's look back at this triangle. We'll mark that angle right there, call that theta. Why don't we come along over here? We'll say the tangent of that angle is equal to the opposite side, which is that 47.4, over the adjacent, which is 40.4. So then just take the inverse tangent of that ratio, and when you do that, you have a preliminary angle of about 49.6 degrees. But we don't want that angle per se. We want the angle measured from the positive x-axis. So we want this angle right here. That's right there. And hopefully we can see that to get that angle, we're gonna subtract the 49.6 from 180 degrees. So the theta will be 180 minus that 49.6. And finally, when you do that, you're gonna get about 130 degrees. Or if you wish, 130.4 degrees. And that is the angle measured again, <laughs> counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, and the answer to part f.